I was on tour with the ISU International Skating Union Tour of Champions post Olympics and World Championships. Um, and the odd thing with the skating industry is that the European Championships and World Championships are always back to back February March. Put the Olympics in between, you get the three events within five weeks of each other. They don't, unlike other sports, we also have a World Championship in the same year as the Olympics. So it was a bit of a whirlwind championship season, January European Championships, February Olympics, March World Championships, and then on to this Tour of Champions. And I had two days off, um, and I knew that during that time off that the City of Bristol wanted to try and have a welcome home bus stop tour and a celebration. So it was organized a certain date, and that I knew. I flew back into Heathrow, went down to Bristol, stayed overnight with my family. The scale, the, the epicness and the scale of the event in Bristol on that day was already overwhelming. To then come on to College Green, which was this wonderful open green area in front of the city council house, which is a beautiful curved building and, and the grandeur of that, you know, in front of 400, apparently something like 400,000 people. Um, to then step up onto the stage to say thank you very much and to, to accept um, the, uh, the gratitude of the city and the mayor and, and to be stopped mid-sentence by this lovely thing with the great Eamon Andrews. And I, I think there's a stunned look on my face of, of how can this be? And you know, people say, well, what's your first reaction? I said, how can you have a this is your life when you haven't had a life yet? Because I hadn't had my life. I, I was doing my day job and I was doing the thing that I loved, but I certainly hadn't considered that that was my life. In hindsight, I think what it is is that it was the space of time with which I had achieved what I had achieved. I had become part of the, the consciousness of it during 76 Olympics when John Curry was champion and he won. And I was the coming up, I was sort of there and everyone said, well, he's the next one to look at. Um, and then prior to that, I suppose, because there weren't that many boys doing what I did, I got through the ranks from novice to junior, junior to senior very quickly. I was a junior and senior, in fact, the same year. The career happened very quickly and was allowed to blossom very quickly, partly because there was nobody else to do it. And I just took the bull by the horns and off you go. Once <laughs> you get over the shock and they take you to the studios, you know, sit in the studios, you go to a little ante room, which is probably about a third of the size of this dressing room we're in now in, in, here in Manchester, and you sit, and you don't have a newspaper, you don't have a, you have nothing. And you just sit and you think, and you think, well, who have they got? Where have they come from? How have they done that? How long have they taken? I have no idea. You were at my, or, or all my family here. Is it, what's going on? Um, how? So it's, it's, it's amazing. And then again, to have the, to be, have the family and my grandmother and the immediate family and my brothers and sister, sister-in-laws, and then have the family who had housed me and had supported me been a part of my life for those very tight and and intense years leading up to the Olympics. So to have them there as well was um, absolutely amazing mm -hmm. and um, it's very much a moment and again it's people that you know that I suppose it, because you now think of it that your life would not be the same without them yeah. and they are very much part of this is this is your life as a result of all these other people helping you. That's really what it should say, because there's no way that anybody can do this on their own. I had no idea that my primary school had been used as part of a music and movement dance project to get people in, or, or to look at child psychology. I had no idea. But there was the footage on This Is Your Life of a seven, six or seven year old Robin with his dried maraca thing. I had no idea that this this was all going on and that my primary school teacher was a pioneer in, in, in all of that. So, you know, Miss Nash, she obviously saw something in her kids and allowed us to do things that probably other primary schools weren't doing. Did that help me get to where I am today? I would have to say a resounding yes. And she, was, she certainly would if she was still around. The ballet teacher who I had, Joan Watson, um, you know, was very keen on me giving up the skating lark and becoming a ballet dancer and really pushing the dance side of it and see where it would go. I, I didn't really want to be a ballet dancer. I enjoyed the music and the movement of it, but I wanted to be Gene Kelly. So it would have, ballet eventually would have made way for modern and whatever it would have been that I would have ended up on the West End stage doing then what I'm now doing, 
which is, you know, living my childhood dream of wanting to be a, a musical theatre star. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing when I was a child. Skating came along and side took me that, and so did the dance lessons. So I think somebody said, or she said to Pam, that she stole you from her and that she would have made you a great dancer and Pam made me a skater. But I have to say that Pam Davis, who is no longer with us, um, was instrumental from the very first time she saw me in making a decision that she was going to put her heart and soul into any student she had. We all were made to feel very special from the very beginning. We were involved in our music, we were involved in what we wore, how we choreographed it, we played, she took us out to see things. She made us a part of the process rather than being the teacher who just told you what to do. Who knew that, that uh, see, I wouldn't have said I had enough material to, to do. Again, it all goes back to going back to the, to the schools and, and how the, the researchers do their work and the fact that there were all these things with Darlene with the ballet classes in Colorado and Carla and Krista and the Wileys. And it's, again, it's the extended family who have helped make what you do possible. So the three o'clock in the morning thing and Jim Davidson and Judith Chalmers and, and then bringing on, you know, here I was, one of the, the youngest Olympians ever to be honoured, having some of the oldest Olympians still alive um, walk on. What do you say to that? It's an honour. It was the first time I'd actually experienced what had happened in, in the UK as a result of what I had done in America. Um, but at the time it is, I mean, overwhelming is, is um, still not even a strong enough word to, to describe the feeling that, that it has of what has, the magnitude of what has gone on in your life over those, let's say, four months. I'm very honoured to have been part of one of the most iconic series that British television has ever produced. And I'm, I'm very honoured and I'm very grateful that that, that has happened.